Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Alton West. Today, I will have guests on from the LaGrange Police Department. Also, I will have on some young guests from the Lafayette Society of Performing Arts. So stay tuned for those interviews coming up in just a moment. Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm sitting down with none other than one of our finest in blue from the LaGrange Police Department. I have with me today, Sergeant Larry Lemie. Larry, welcome to the show. Well, I appreciate you uh, giving me the sergeant credentials. I'm a corporal, though. <laughs> corporal, I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. all right. I'm glad to be here, though. Well, I just promoted you, though. They yeah, got to right. find out about it, right? Nothing wrong with that. Okay, all right. <laughs> corporal, I'm sorry. Well, Larry, it's a pleasure to sit down with you. And again, I always like to start out by saying thank you and all the men and women in blue to do the things that you all do to protect and keep our city safe. So thank you very much. Well, for I appreciate that. I'm glad, glad, glad to. Uh, offer the services to the city of LaGrange. It's a pleasure. Well, now Larry Thomas, you've been with the city of now for a number of years. How many years is it exactly? I got a little better than 18 years in 18 now. 18 years, okay. The city of LaGrange. It's been really good, too. Well, you know what? I started out down in the LaGrange Police Department uh -huh. some years ago, and I must say it was a great place to work then, and I know that under the new administration, it's even a better place to work. And uh, I will definitely say so. It's the only police department I've ever worked for, but you know, I, I get to get the opportunity to ride around the state and see the police departments, and I'm, I'm proud to work for the City of LaGrange and work for the LaGrange Police Department. Well, very good. We're very glad to have you on our on our team, too. Yes. Now, Larry, tell us about, you work in the traffic division with the police department. Tell us a little bit about some of your, about your role there, if you don't mind. Well, my role at the police department is uh, I do general traffic duties, so I go out and investigate traffic crashes, uh, enforce traffic laws, whether city or local state traffic laws. Uh, that's the main thing that I normally do for Sea Lagrange. Okay, and you know, you're talking about traffic laws, and I, I know it's, and, and we've talked about it in the past. I've had um, uh, Wesley on talking about blocking up intersections. I know as the summer, you know, progresses, and you get a few more cars on the on the streets. Even uh, yeah, school definitely. buses are gone. Yep. You got kids out going back and forth to work. What is your, your, your suggestion to people when they come up to that intersection? Because I'm well, still seeing it happen. The, yeah, the main thing is you have to remember that when you go up to an intersection or before you proceed past the stop bar into the intersection, make sure that A, you have a green light, mm -hmm. uh, and B, make sure that there's enough room uh, in front of you to, to get through that intersection. Uh, you know, what you'll typically see is that, you know, people don't want to get caught by the red light, so they pile all into the intersection, which what you're talking about, blocking the intersection. And, but the thing is that the, the, the traffic in front of them has nowhere to go, so then you're stuck right in the middle of the intersection. Mm -hmm. And then when you're stuck in the middle of the intersection, traffic going the opposite direction can't proceed through the intersection because you're blocking it. Right. Um, that is a violation of Georgia law, and that is a that is a no-no for nope. sure. Absolutely. You know, so many times I still see it happening, especially at the Vernon and uh, and uh, Vernon and uh, uh, Bull Street intersection. People pull, and it'll be right in the middle. Yep. And you know, the light will change for the traffic to flow south, and that's correct. It can't move. You know, unfortunately, you know, there's no. Uh, best practices to, to time lights, that lights can always change in a way That's right. that, that traffic can always always proceed all the way through. So again, the, the big thing to remember is to, to don't pull past the stop bar until the traffic in front of you has already moved forward enough that you can clear that intersection without tying That's it up. That's right. Because ultimately, you know, all these things, blocking the intersection can lead to accidents. And, Absolutely. And I was talking with you before we came on the, on the air, and I noticed that you uh, track accident trends and things of that nature. That's and correct. And we kind of seen that accidents are on the increase here in the city. Yes, the accidents are, are big times on the increase. Uh, just in the city of LaGrange so far this year, uh, we've had 980 wrecks oh my. so far this year just in the city of LaGrange. And 980 wrecks is way too much, way mm -hmm. high for mm -hmm. a, a small city as LaGrange. Uh -huh. Now we know that you know, especially during the daytime peak hours, there's a lot of commuters that are coming, you know, through Troop County, going, you know, north and south and west and east of here, mm -hmm. coming through Troop County, so in the city of LaGrange. So we know that there are a lot of cars here, but even with a lot of cars here, you know, we know that there's contributing factors that cause all these crashes. Um, and again, you know, 980 just year to date in the city of LaGrange is that's that's excessive. That is, that's. I mean, we're only six months into the year. That's you right. got 980. What's your average tr per year? You think uh, somewhere around 2,000 or so 2000. a year. Okay. And you know, a lot of people think, well, it's it's just a wreck, but it's not just a wreck. You know, there, you top a lot of resources with the police department, mm -hmm. you know, the fire department, EMS having to come. That's right. Uh, not including when you have wrecks that you further block and obstruct the roadway, which hinders the motoring public from able to proceed through intersections and get mm -hmm. to where they're going. Uh, and also the economic impact of, of insurance rates. You know, anytime you have a wreck, 
somebody's got to pay for that wreck and pay for the damages. That's right. And we all pay with insurance premiums and stuff like that. So, but the summertime is always there's always a peak in it. Again, there's more people on the road traveling, going to vacations. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, instead of people being you know in school, they're out and about driving, going from point to point. So, it, you know, you see a spike in crashes, but it's it's a lot here in the city of Lagrange. Absolutely. Now, Larry, I know that we've had uh, Wesley. He talked about distracted drivers. Uh -huh. in, in some of these 980 incidents, uh, speed is not the case. What are some of the things that you've seen as contributing factors to some of these incidents? Well, we, we know that distracted driving is a big one. Uh -huh. uh, distracted driving is an is a epidemic nationwide. Uh, it's really been bad around here, as in texting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, playing with the radio in your car, mm -hmm. you know, just talking to another passenger in your car and not paying attention to where you're going mm -hmm. uh, is one of them also. Uh, you know, playing with your navigation, your car, your radio channels and stuff like that. Uh, those are all, you know, big things. Uh, we also know that, um, and this, this is a, a trend that just continues year after year, unfortunately, but falling too close and fade to yield. Falling too close means you run into the back of somebody who stops you know, at a light or an intersection, something like that, uh, and failure to yield, you know, such as, you know, you're going to make a left turn at an intersection, and, you know, yes, I have a green light, but I don't have a left green arrow. Uh -huh. I make the left turn in front of another car, and I get struck in the side. Uh, those are our two biggest contributing factors uh, is falling too close to failure to yield. And, they're, they're, and the thing is, they're so preventable. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are 100% preventable. Uh, just pay a little extra attention and, and, and watch what you're doing. Absolutely. You know, all of those things that people can control, you know, and, and I guess what really gets me a lot of times, I, I may be driving alone and you have somebody that may be in that left lane and they just kind of, you know, maybe a little less than the speed limit uh -huh. and you, you go past them and then you see them there and they got that phone. That's right. And, you know, it's so dangerous. It is. It's so dangerous. You know, they say that, you know, distracted driving, uh, your chances of, in, of a crash are 23 times more than normal if you're texting or, uh -huh. or doing some type of distracted driving. You're 23 times nor 23. more than normal to have a crash while you're doing that, engaging that distracted driving. That's right. And that's that's a lot. It, it absolutely is, you know, and, and you know, you want to arrive alive, you know, the 55, arrive yeah, alive. Yeah, that's it. I hadn't heard know, that one in a while. <laughs> that's right, arrive uh -huh. alive, 55. That's so right. So you still need to, you know, just those common sense things. And you know, and even in common sense things, sometimes we need to have the proper vehicle maintenance and when you're getting ready to get on the road, because it is the summertime, people will be traveling. That's what right. are some tips that you can give uh, motorists? Well, what I would recommend is, is vehicle maintenance is a, is a big thing that we can contribute to a lot of wrecks. Uh, you hear about it uh, every year. You hear about especially like church bands and stuff like that, tires blow out, mm -hmm. stuff like that. They have these rollover crashes. But uh, vehicle maintenance is really big because... Uh, you know, if your brakes aren't maintained properly in your car, obviously you can't get stopped properly. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have underinflated tires, it causes a couple things. Your tire is more susceptible to having a blowout, <laughs> mm -hmm. which causes you to lose control of your vehicle. Also, uh, it, it increases your, your fuel mileage goes down when you don't have properly maintained tires. Uh, another thing a lot of people don't think about until it rains is your wiper blades. You know, the, the recommendation is you change your wiper blades every six months on your car. Uh -oh. You know, a lot of people, they wait till it storms and they can't see. If you can't see where you're going when it's raining, That's you right. know, you're more susceptible to have a crash. They say, well, wipers didn't work or that, you know, I couldn't see. Those, those are some things also to keep in mind. Uh, you know, tires are a big thing. It's during the summertime, uh, the heat that's generated in tires that makes them a lot more susceptible to blowing out if they're not maintained properly. Mm -hmm. uh, the recommendation is that uh, if your tires are more than five years old, you should replace them. Regardless of the amount of tread that's on them, you should replace them every okay. five years because uh, they dry rot. Mm -hmm. And when they dry rot, they, they more likely to explode or, or blow out is what people say. Right. And you, you read the news anywhere across the United States, you see you know, a car crash because they had a blowout. And uh, so it, it can be dangerous. And again, all common sense things that people can do, especially like say summer's coming in, uh, people are going to be on the road traveling or back and forth to various jobs. That's right. And, and another thing that I notice sometimes, and it happens to me when I'm driving up the interstate heading home, sometimes uh -huh. I, get, I get a little sleepy, Larry. That is right. Uh, they, they, we know that sleeping and driving is uh, worse than driving drunk or uh -huh. being under the influence of whatever it may be. Uh, sleeping and driving is, is, is an epidemic that the thing is it's really hard to track statistics with sleeping and driving or, uh -huh. or being sleepy because most people won't admit that I fell asleep, fell asleep. and I crashed, okay? Uh, so the statistics out there are we know are not correct, but it's very high. Uh, whenever you're sleepy, it's worse than driving drunk. And also, you know, people need to keep in mind, you know, we're all busy nowadays, we work a lot. But the, the, the new standard is they say adults should have at least seven hours of sleep at night okay. and teenagers should have at least eight hours of sleep at night. Okay. And we know that that, that helps uh, you know, greatly, keeps your 
uh, your your body to where you can pay attention better. You know, anytime you doze off just for a second, you know that can that could be what it takes to oh, crash. Yeah. We don't want to do that. That split second. That's it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, Larry, you know, it's always a pleasure to sit down with you. And again, I want to just say thank you for coming on the show. And thank you for what you and the rest of the team do there at the LaGrange Police Department to keep our streets and our communities safe. And by all means, we definitely want to have you come back on about midsummers. Kind of tell us, give us some updates, some things that you see happening. And just kind of give some words of encouragement to our drivers for the summer, okay? Well, thank you very much. We're glad to come back. All right, Larry. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for more City Weekend Jazz. Just a moment. Just what you're hungry for. It's in downtown LaGrange. You have 17 restaurants to choose from. And each has its own personality. From chef-driven establishments to life on the casual side. Celebrate. Create traditions. Make new friends. Discover new tastes. Downtown LaGrange is simply delicious. So come on down. City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm being joined, joined by some young actors here in our community. One who has been on the show before. I want to say first of all, welcome back, Charlie. And I also want to welcome, for the first time, Walker Kemp. Ladies and gentlemen, both of you all, welcome to the show. Well, now, on the show, we have to do a little talking back and forth. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you all some <laughs> questions in just a moment, okay? Now, Charlie, I know that you've been on before. You all are getting ready to... Uh, Put on the pr presentation, Disney Aladdin Jr. Tell me a little bit about your role, if you don't mind. Um, well, I play Jasmine, the Sultan's daughter, which is the princess, and she longs to be free, but she's having to marry a suitor that oh. she doesn't even know, and she just wants to be free. She just wants to be free. She don't want to be tied down to some guy that she don't know, right? I, I, if I were you, I would just run off. I wouldn't that's even. What make, she does. That's what she's going to do, right? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Well, look. I'm going to. I'm going to ask Walker. I think this is your first time being on the show with me, Walker. So I want to just say welcome to the show once again. Okay. And uh, tell me, what is your role in the? Uh, I play Aladdin. Oh. Yes. And Aladdin's a guy. He's poor, very poor, and he's just a criminal because he steals everything because he's poor. Okay. And then so, when. Jasmine runs away, as she just mentioned. Um, he bumps into her, and um, that's how they meet, and they fall in love. Oh. And then, you know, he's oh. not a prince, so she can't marry him. That's right. That's right. I bet, it, you know, I bet it's going to be a wonderful play. Let me ask you, you ladies and gentlemen, I know that, uh, Charlie, you've been acting, I think, since you were five, correct? Yes, sir. What is it about it that, you, that makes you want to continue to do this? What do you enjoy about it the most? I just love singing and acting really okay i just find it very fun and it's just what i love to do all right well very good walker what got you in, involved with the acting role well i just enjoyed it and like my um kitty and charlie my cousins uh -huh. she's my cousin she, okay <laughs> all right um they were doing it and i saw how great of a time they had when they were doing it so i decided to try it and i loved it so i just done it ever since. Okay, well, very good. I'm, and, and we're going to talk about when the play is going to be presented here. But tell us a little bit about your, your day. How does your day begin when you get there to the theater? And we're going to talk about where it's going to be held. Talk about a little bit about how your day starts. Well, first we go take our lunchbox to the fridge. Oh, the first important thing, get that out of the way, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> and then we warm up and stretch with our choreographer, Madison. Okay, all right. What about for you, Walker? Pretty much the same? This basically. Oh, okay. But after we um, stretch, we go to um, um, vocals with. Um, 
Stacy. Stacy Hardigree. Okay, all right. Yes, well, very good. Now, and, and I know that this is, I think it's a two week camp that you all are attending. Is that correct? Yes, yes ma'am. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry. That's okay. Um, and then this is during the summer. What's, what's you all's hours? How, how long do you all work out there? Um, we go four to ten. Four, okay. I mean, not four to ten. Ten, 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 to, ten four. to four. Ten to four. You're working the second shift. That's right, Charlie. You're in the first shift, I guess, walking. <laughs> Charlie's working the second shift. So you, you're there. So, and it's pretty intense from what I understand, yeah. right? Now, yes, let sir. me ask you. Okay, you guys just finished up school. You're now in a, a very intense two-week, you know, rehearsal and things like that. Why, why do you all want to be involved? I heard Walker talking about because his family and, and friends and, and, and Madison, I mean, uh, your cousins and things <laughs> like that all involved. But what do you want? Do, would, you in, would you encourage other young people to get involved with things of this? Yes, sir, so I would. Why would, you, why would you encourage them to be involved? Because um, it's just a fun experience, and you can meet lots of new friends, and you can just have fun and see what it's like. Okay, very good. What do you think, Walker? Would you encourage I, your friends to be involved? Yes, I would. Okay. Why? You, would um, you tell them why? Because they, it's like good for future preferences. Like when you get older and you have to go to an interview for a job, like you know how to like speak clearly and know how to present yourself as if if you never did any of these things, they're good life lessons for like how to do it and calm your nerves if you're about to go to prison. <laughs> okay, like very good. And I can tell it's paying off because you're very calm and cool collective <laughs> over there, Aladdin. <laughs> now let's talk about when is this play going to be presented and where is it going to be presented? Um, um, June, June 17th, 17th at um, the Price Theater, the 7 o'clock p.m. Okay, at the Price Theater, 7 o'clock p.m. And then June 18th at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Okay, so there's two times on the 18th, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. What's the charge for people to come in? Um... <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're not really I, sure. Not really sure. I tell yeah. you what, I think we're going to have some of the uh, other uh, characters going to come yes, on sir. here and we'll ask them that question at that time, okay? All right. Now, is I understand that you all are, this is a collaborative effort between, I think, the young singers and others. How is it working with the young singers for you all? It's, well, it's going good. It's going good? It's not it, really affecting anything. <laughs> it, it's well, sort of helping us out. It's helping us out. We like learn more um, how to sing our vowels and good diction. Okay. When I said it's not really affecting anything, I meant like when some people, like, it's not like there's a group over here when they're one group and then there's a group over here. We're really all together. Working together. Yeah, okay, that's I understand. What I meant. That's a good way to <laughs> clean that up. Okay, all right, very good. Well, let me ask you, as we get ready to wrap up here, because I like, again, I think we got a couple of other uh, characters going to come on and talk a little bit about more about it. Um, I think that you're going to be singing a song for Charlie during the play. What song will you be singing? Um, we're actually singing it together. Okay. Um, it's a whole new world. Oh my. You know what? I almost wanted to ask you just to give us just a little bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys do that? I, I tell you what, I won't put you on the spot, but before we finish up the show, I may ask you guys to come back and give us just a little bit of it, okay? <laughs> How about okay. that? Yes, sir. Good. Okay. All right. Well, I think I have a couple more uh, individuals I want to bring up and uh, get their perspective, but I want to definitely say thank you both for being on the show today, and I hope that the general public will come out and support Aladdin and also Jasmine in the Disney's Disney Aladdin Jr. So I want to thank both of you all for being on the show today. Thank you. All right. Thank you for Ladies having us. Thank you for being here once again. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for more City Weekend in just a moment. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm sitting down with Bailey Orr and Jackie Mormon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, <coughs> excuse me, I had on just a moment ago Charlie Key and I also had on Walker Kemp. And I think they were the good side of the play. Yeah, and I think now I'm going to talk to the not as good side of the play characters here. Bailey, if you don't mind, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Um, well, my parents... My mom teaches dance at LSPA. Okay. And then my dad works with insurance. And, and what is his name? I think a, that name. Matt Orr. Matt Orr. Okay. You look just like your dad, too. Thank you. Now, let me ask you, how long have you been in, in the acting uh, career? 
Well, I I started last year in the fall. Uh huh. I started in third grade. In the third grade. Do you enjoy it? I enjoy it a lot. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to ask you a little bit about your character in just a moment, but I'm going to uh, go over to Jackie Mormon, uh, another name here that kind of rings in our community. <laughs> uh, related to anybody, Jackie? Um, my mom is Sarah Mormon. She works. She's an eighth grade teacher at uh, Long Cane Middle School. And my dad is Jack Mormon. He ah. He's the principal of Everett Hollis Hand. That's right. Jack and I are good friends go way back. <laughs> now, let me ask you about your acting career. How long have you been in, in um, acting? I've been doing, like, little plays and stuff since around, like, kindergarten and stuff. But I got really, really into it around second grade. Okay. All right. Well, let me ask you now, both of you all, why, why are you involved with the acting career? What is it about that inspired you to want to become uh, an actor and, and, and to participate in these plays? Uh, Bailey, anything particular? When I, I went to New York when I was eight, and I saw my first Broadway show, I met Sutton Foster, uh -huh. and she really inspired me to act. Okay, well, very good. When you're eight, all right, very good. Jackie? I've always like liked the Broadway style of music, the big showbiz kind of music, the, and the soft, sweet, and pretty stuff too. Okay. And um, I've always like wanted to do that myself and grow up to be a performer or something of that type. Okay. Well, so. very good. Very good. All right. So we had yeah. Aladdin and Jasmine <clears throat> on just a moment ago. Now, Bailey, I know that you're going to be playing the role at Ergon. Iago. Iago, okay. Tell us a little bit about that character. Um, Iago figures things out. He really won't be quiet if he knows <laughs> something. Okay. <laughs> a tell-all, huh? Yes. Okay. Um, he's smart. Um, it's, ah. um, it's really, it's a fun character. Okay. Probably pretty mischief too if he's very yes. smart, isn't he? he okay. He's any, quite any, mischievous. Okay. Any little secrets or things that you want to tell us about that he's going to figure out? He's going to figure out who Prince Ali is and why Aladdin escaped from the dungeon, pretty much, and how Ali is Aladdin. Ah, okay. He's also going to figure out why we can't just take care of Aladdin because of the genie. Okay. Okay, so we won't give too much away, so they have to come yeah. and see the show, okay? Yes. All right. And Jackie, tell us a little bit about your I, character. I play Jafar, uh -huh. the kind of big, mysterious, main bad guy kind of dude. Uh -huh. um, he has worked for the royal family for almost like all his life. Uh -huh. And he's fed up with playing nursemaid, keeping up with all the thieves in Agrabah, all the criminals. He's fed up with having to take orders and bow down to the Sultan. So he decides that he's going to become the Sultan. By, because the princess is very indecisive about what prince she's gonna marry or if she even has to. So he goes down to the ancient text, the ancient laws of Agrabah, and desecrates them out a new law, saying that if she doesn't get a prince to marry her in a certain amount of time, that the Sultan's right-hand man, the Jafar, uh -huh. would become betrothed to the princess and also become the Sultan. Oh my! So, oh. so he's a bad guy. He's a pretty bad guy. He's a pretty bad guy. <laughs> seems like this. <laughs> well, let me ask you now, ladies and, and both of you all, um, the ages of the young people. Because I hear Bailey say she when she went to to New York when she was eight, uh, third grade. What are the age ranges of the cast members that you all are, are, are participating with? Second through eighth. Second through eighth graders we're talking about here, mm -hmm. right? Let me ask you, like you all were inspired, why do you think some of them, and I know you can't speak for them, but do you think they perhaps have some of the same reason for uh, wanting to act? Um, I think most of my friends would just do it to, as a time waster to get out of the house and just... <laughs> not be playing their PS4 all day. <laughs> okay, all right, well very good. I mean, you're doing something productive with mm -hmm. yourself during the summer. Now, <clears throat> a moment ago, uh, we were talking with, uh, with uh, Charlie and, and Walker, and again, if you all don't mind, and I think uh, uh, 
Well, Jackie, I think you have the flyer there next to you. Tell them the dates again and the location, if you don't mind. It is June 17th at 7 p.m. and June 18th at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Okay. It's at the, the Grange College Price Theater because the LSPA place is getting renovated okay. right now. Okay. It right. is $5 for admission, and for tickets, you can visit the www.lspaarts.org. Okay. Well, very good. Now, general public. You want them to come out and support you guys. Now, I know that Bailey has been in other productions, and I think sounds like you said you've been in other mm -hmm. productions. But is there one to follow this one for the summer? Do they have something to look forward to for the summer? Is there another one that you all know of at this time that you can share? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. Don't think so? There, there might be. They're okay. doing Grease. Okay. Oh, yeah, they're doing uh, the more older people are doing Grease. The older people. Yeah, oh, okay, the older, the older people, people are doing, older people Grease. doing Grease. Ah, the older, yeah. Okay. All right. So we definitely want to come out and support <coughs> the older people, too, right? All right. Well, but, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all both for being on the show today. And again, that is going to be June 17th at the Price Theater and also June the 18th at Price Theater. The mission is, is five bucks. And you can go online and get your tickets at LSPA Arts. Dot org. So come on out and support our young people. Bailey and Jackie, we want to thank both of you all for being on the show today. Thank you. All thank, right. you. All right. thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for more City Week in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining for City Week this week. My guests have been from the LaGrange Police Department, Corporal Larry Lemay, as he talked about not becoming a distracted driver this summer as we drive over the city streets of LaGrange. Also, ladies and gentlemen, I had on from the Lafayette Society of Performing Arts, I have on Charlie Key, Walker Kemp, Jackie Mormon, and Bailey Orr as they talked about the upcoming Disney Aladdin Jr. that will be taking place on June the 17th and 18th at the Price Theater. So make sure you come out and support these young individuals in this very worthwhile cause. And as stated earlier, they have come back, a couple of them, to give us a rendering of A Whole New World. Here I have with us Charlie Key and Walker Kemp. Please enjoy these talented young individuals. I can show you the world Shining, shimmering, splendid Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? I can open your eyes, take you wander by wander, over sideways and under, on a magic carpet ride. A whole new world, a new fantastic point of view. No one to tell us no, or where to go, or say we're only dreaming. A whole new world, a dazzling place I never knew. But when I'm way up here, it's crystal clear. Now, now I'm in a whole new world with you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week again on City Week. What do you know about operating a boat? Hi, this is Sergeant Jim Bradfield with DNR Law Enforcement in Troop County. Have you heard of the 100-foot law? What is the minimum age of a boat operator? Can you drink alcohol on a boat? Take a boater education course and you'll know the answer to these questions and a lot more. Also remember that anyone born after January the 1st, 1998 must take an approved course to operate a boat on Georgia waters. Information on classroom, online, and home study courses is available at gadnrle.org.